Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back. I hope you guys are doing awesome. It is 11:26, um, November 26, 2024. Here at 11:47 a.m. I am a little bit late on this message. Um, I did not want to give this message, but the father wants me to give this. I'm off camera today because I can literally sit in anything and do this and run out the house and i'm going to just leave the lead picture up the very next video because i hear some of y'all still you will see me on camera okay i'll be on camera god has already told me that so um to the new people so welcome to my channel um if you're new to the channel my name is v um i am you're probably divinely guided here by the holy spirit to obtain a little piece of the puzzle that you're missing you'll have a piece over here a piece over here maybe a piece over here too and i will connect the dots so welcome to the channel if you're new um you might hear my fan it is just slightly hot here it's been 70 in georgia so it's been hotter than normal <clears throat> so to my old geez oh geez family oh geez oh geez oh geez oh geez give me my virtual hug today come through fam okay oh yes so let's get into this now I have to admit, I did not want to give this message. I wrestled with the Holy Spirit for three days. And um, so I'm a little bit late on this message. And to be honest, I did not want to put this up because um, I am not one, anyone that's mentored with me to put anything that is going on in my personal life out um, up front. And because uh, I don't give the devil any credit that he doesn't deserve. That's the whole point. He, you know, certain spirits, they want the glory. I don't give that to them. Hence the reason why I mess up his name every chance I can, because he won't give my God glory. So I'm not going to give him glory. So, but God kept pressing on my heart to give this. And I believe that is a message for the body because that's why he actually kept pressing on me to give this actual message. So um, he said, go ahead and go off camera for this particular message and um, give it because it's important because some people are planning already for Thanksgiving and things of that nature. And, you know, here in America, guys, we have Thanksgiving. It's about to hit on Thursday. And today is Tuesday when I'm recording this message. But this video will reach some people before Thanksgiving. And they have been wrestling with some things. So, and I absolutely apologize. This dream, it's a dream that I had. And had I known how important this dream was going to be, I would have written down the date and time. I can tell you around when it happened. And it baffled me and God just gave the revelation after um, the situation occurred. So, um, and I understand why now too, because it was for this um, time frame. So I think this was probably like early June, about June 5th or so. I had this dream. I don't know what time. I did not write it down. I just started um, praying on the dream and God did not give me revelation on everything. So sometimes just in case you guys um, he wants me to explain this. So come on through Holy Spirit. So with the gift of dream interpretation and the gift of dreams, um, it's different for each people, each person, you know, we all operate differently in our gifts, but we are all connected in the spiritual realm. So, um, God can lock up mysteries and sometimes those mysteries are for a set time and place. And you read about this in the um, book of Revelations and different Bible books that he will lock up something for a certain time frame. Dreams are actually in a way sometimes mysteries even to um, dream interpreters, seers, it doesn't matter until God gives us the revelation of that dream. So um, we are also clues because it's not of our own strength that we're actually interpreting the dream or God is giving us the interpretation of the dream. It is of him. So, excuse me. So, um, I literally sat with him and I knew I got a really unusual feeling behind this dream, but I knew it was a warning dream and it turned out to definitely be a warning dream, um, which I do get frequently. So I was like, okay, Lord, what is this? What precisely is this? So I'm going to go over the dream and then I'm going to go on the interpretation and then I'm going to go over to the message to the body that God actually wants to leave with everyone. Um, right now, this may be a long video. I'm going to try to squeeze it in as quickly as possible because I'm already late um, for what I need to do as well. So, so I believe it was like June 5th ish. I got this dream and like I said, it's now November and I didn't write down the dream. But 
the overwhelming sound I hear in the spiritual realm too um, that I got was it's a sound from a movie like a cliffhanger sound I'm gonna go ahead and try to put the sound down here it probably won't be today it will probably be tomorrow guys the cliffhanger sound but it was like mm, that's the best way I can put it um, that was kind of what I got and it was kind of like a dream and he's reminding me of what was actually in the icy bags um, video down here which is the same scripture you know it'll be like them who dreamed however you know anyone that's been on this channel does know that you know God uses me on both sides both light and dark so I see on both light and dark sides I'm like the polar opposite on both ends on on that so um, and this was the polar opposite of that what has to take place and what has to occur and that he wants to get through very clearly um, as you're hearing from other prophetic voices um, to to let go and why to let go is key in this dream so I'm gonna go over it so <clears throat> so in the stream um, it's almost like the dream came on and I could I guess it's really weird because it's like in 3d again sort of it's not as uh, it was not quite as um, 3d like the icy bags but it was three it was it was very um, sensory thank you Holy Spirit you, like sensory you could feel the air the Christmas you know not Christmas <laughs> although I'm looking forward to it uh, the crispness in the air you could sense um, the feeling like on a beach when you're just soaking in everything and I was feeling it that way <clears throat> and the dream came on like that and I could hear the first thing I could hear was the ocean waves and they were all around me and I now understand that um, I was on an island and I could, but I could hear very clearly the ocean waves and coming from a beach town originally um, that's a you know it's a beautiful sound and you do not forget it it was like the ocean waves thank you Holy Spirit come through lapping up against the shore and when you sit out there for long enough you it, you become rhythmic with that feeling and the sound of that and you could hear these like ocean waves lapping up really hardly against the shore and they were hitting something though so um, <clears throat> and I could hear that very clearly so um, one of the areas that I grew up, you know, sometimes I'll have walls up, which are breaker walls, um, breaker walls, sorry guys, that's my alarm, breaker walls where the ocean will hit the breaker walls and you hear, you know, like the sound of the ocean waves lapping up against the breaker walls. So <clears throat> I became very clear and oh, clearly aware that this was the ocean. It was hitting up against like a wall. Okay. And I understand that now when the dream came on, it's kind of hard to explain, but it was during the it's like I was seeing during the day but it was at night so like night vision which now makes sense like x-ray night vision keep that in mind that's very integral to this dream but I was operating like it was day although it was night and Holy Spirit saying you know that's tying into the scripture that um, the world will become dark but you will become a light and your light will shine bright in the dark and I was seeing like it was day like it was clearly a you know a clear day to me but it was nighttime <clears throat> and at first it came in really blurry which um, meant at that time that it was pending which it was and it has now been fulfilled but it is at that time that it was pending back in June so of course I did pray against it um, but God's will will always prevail and we're gonna get into that as well and now I understand why God's will prevailed and I'm very thankful for it so I immediately was taken now um, I need to explain how God uses me in dreams so that you understand because explaining this is hard if not <clears throat> he uses me in multiple perspectives because I'm a seer so I can see from below above different perspectives I can also see outside my body while inside my body and things of that nature I can also embody a person in um, a dream to see how they see and feel how they feel so um, I can see from different perspectives and in this particular dream that was the case so it's like I'm seeing from two different perspectives it is me but I'm also seeing outside myself and then I'm transported inside of myself which was a clue and I didn't get it until God gave me the interpretation of for this dream so <clears throat> I was seeing outside of myself but then I was transported into the dream so I could actually be inside the dream okay 
and in the stream I'm hearing the ocean waves very clearly you know uh, slapping up against what seems to be the wall and they were slapping very hard and I do know now that that to be God's glory okay <clears throat> And then I was zoomed in from where I was seeing this um, and I was taken to myself in the dream, transported to myself in the dream. Um, and very oddly, I'm laying on grass. So I was standing looking at it in a front perspective and kind of taking it in and seeing what was there and hearing what was there. And then I'm transported to where I am, <clears throat> which is very oddly, I'm laying on the grass in this extremely lush, fertile valley. Um, it's like this, um, <coughs> excuse me guys, my allergies are getting to me. Like this very lush, fertile valley. Hold on one second, I think I might have to turn the fan off above me. Give me one second, guys. <coughs> Apologize for that. And my allergy medications in my car, but we're going to make it work. So, um, I was in this very lush, fertile valley. Um, so I'm transported from me looking outside into the dream to this very lush, fertile valley. And I, what's very odd is I'm laying on the grass. And this is extremely lush grass. I've not seen this. It's like, it's almost like it's not earthly grass. It's not, it's not, it's heavenly grass. And it's the most luscious and fertile thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's this beautiful grass and they don't have it here on earth. And I'm laying down on this grass and next to me is my son. <clears throat> and I'm waking up from being asleep, which now makes sense. And I wake up and I see, now remember, I'm seeing this as if it's day as if everything is clear daylight, but it is clearly night. Now I'm waking up from being asleep, which, um, and my son is laying next to me and I look above me and there's a blue tarp, just like those little tarps they set up to, to kind of like, um, maybe I have to put a picture down here, um, blue tarp and it, just to put up over something so it doesn't get rained on just a thin blue tarp. And I'll put the meaning of blue right here. Let me see if I can go and get it. Oh, I know I looked it up. One second. Uh, bear with me. Okay, here we go. Blue. Okay, so in the Christian Dream Dictionary, when dreaming of the color blue, the Bible describes this, this color as being one of the royal and heavenly colors. It also illustrates in the Bible that the Lord told Israel to bid, which means to put on the fringes of their clothing, a blue cord. Oh, now that makes sense, God. To remember his commandments. And I believe this is in the Ark of the Covenant. Um, and that's also, I believe, why the blue tassels are on the tallit. God is revealing to me now. Um, and let's see, where was the other one? Uh, it also represents heaven, communion with God, heavenly revelation, which it is. This was heavenly revelation. Okay, so those are just some of the things. Um, blue symbolizes revelation too. Okay, so go back to the stream. <clears throat> so the tarp was blue and it was almost like it was being held up by these thin poles. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it's these little thin poles and um, circle grommets and just the little spiky thing going through it, you know, to hold it up. So like any strong wind could take this thing down. And I'm like, this is so odd. It was just the oddest type of covering. And I'm like, why am I on the grass under this covering? And, um, and why am I sleeping here? So I'll, we'll get into that. So go back to the dream. So hold on. Me one second yeah so I'm waking up my son's next to me which now all this makes sense and it's just a it's just a mini it's not a it's literally very tiny covering 
and it's just over us and it's the tashes and poles and I thought that's the oddest thing on the planet my son's sleeping next to me and I began to walk away and leave him because I didn't want to disturb him I began to walk away and leave him now get that very clearly I walked away and left him under the tarp <clears throat> um, and as I'm walking away leaving him to sleep I notice I'm alone key okay which is key. I didn't get this at the time of the dream. I'm alone and I'm looking down and the water. Okay, so I need to explain. So in this lush valley, it's almost like, it's kind of hard to explain. It's grass, but it's like moss. If you've ever seen, um, is that the right word for it, Lord? The moss that grows in trees that holds the water, um, the thick moss, the grass is almost like that, but it's blades of grass and it's holding water. And you can't see it until you step on it. Come through, Holy Ghost. And as I'm walking down alone, I'm stepping on this grass, the grass, mossy grass, and I can hear the sloshing under my feet. And the weirdest thing at the time, but it makes sense now, which in the beginning I was like, Lord, this doesn't, this looks demonic, but it wasn't. It was black water that was coming up through this. And I'm like, what in the world right and i'm like thinking lord should i be walking here and I'm, I'm getting yes and i'm like okay lord and the black water is overtaking my feet and it's rising quickly and my spirit is being led to go find out where these waves are coming from and i now know that's god's glory and they're lapping up against the wall and the water is rising very quickly very very quickly underneath my feet and this grass and I knew this was a place of blessing and prominence for some reason, like my spirit knew this. And um, it was an island, it was literally an island. Um, so I go back to grab my son, this is key. And I tell him, come on, let's go. Cause I'm being led out to this water for some reason. And when I'm looking at him under this little tarp, this little makeshift tarp that could not even weather a gust of wind, I notice he's asleep. He's still asleep. I wake him up, he's asleep. Now I need to explain, my son, he, he has a really bad problem with like sleepwalking and talking in his sleep. So he's like, you know, so that was not unusual in my dream, but now I understand it's, it was not that. And you will think he's awake, but he's not, which is very prophetic in this dream. So for this dream, I go to wake him up and I say, come on. And he wakes up for a second and he falls back asleep. But I'm literally looking back towards this water in this around the corner like I can feel God's spirit very clearly um and I want to go running back towards this and I know it's a place of safety and towards this water but I keep noticing this he keeps falling asleep and I just keep looking back for a second and he keeps moving which is really weird so like it's almost like I look back and he's in one spot and I look back and he's in another spot and I look back and he's in another spot and he keeps moving, but he's asleep. And I'm like, how is he moving outside of this tarp? And each time he's inching more outside of this tarp. And he keeps moving for the life of me. I couldn't understand why he kept moving from the protection. And I'm like, that's so weird. So, and he keeps falling. He keeps waking up for a second and falling back to sleep. Okay. But he wasn't waking up. He was just being moved to different places, which was really interesting. And I'm like, okay. And he kept falling asleep. It was almost like he had narcolepsy. And I was like, well, what in the world? And I'm like, you know, wake up, come on, wake up, come on. And I now understand that, which I thought was odd. And I remember seeing in my, saying in my mind, oh God, it's like, it's, it's like, I was saying to my God, like, at this point, it's like, he's dead weight, Lord. Like he's like a, he's dead weight to me. And my spirit was, was, was being drawn quickly to the water in the place for some reason of safety and the water continued to rise and the dream went off now, but I was heading, I was running towards the water and I was running there, left him behind cause he kept moving positions. Okay. That's key. And I'm like, what in the world? Now, what was key about this dream? was I was carrying weight, which was him. And oh, God said it's a double entendre. 
You're carrying weight, the glory of God, but you're carrying weight, other people that can't go with you into the glory of God, people of God. And that's what this dream is about. The blessings were surrounding me. That's what the water was in the glory. And they were, and we were on an island. Okay. But who I had on the island with me made a difference. And this is for you too, people of God. And what I noticed was key about this dream. The water was to a certain level and then it stopped. It was like it was waiting for something like the water was sentient. Okay. It was waiting for something. Oh my God. I heard the Holy Spirit so clearly. He said, what is it? The earth groans for the sons and daughters to be, to manifest. Lord, help me. And the, it was sentient, like the water was sentient. It was waiting. But see, the water waits for the sons and daughters and those who are not aware of who they are in God or operating in it or are not sons or daughters is what God is saying. They're not sons or daughters. They have to wake up. Okay. That's what I heard the Holy Spirit say. And it absolutely was. It was waiting. What the Holy Spirit revealed to me was I wasn't seeing my son in the natural. I was seeing my son in the spiritual realm. He was asleep. Okay. Those asleep in the spiritual realm. His spirit was asleep and still is asleep. Okay. And this is very, this is a very deep dream and it's a very revealing dream to those of you um, who are holding on to things and people around you. And people who have you and have people around you that the Holy Spirit is telling you to release, clearly release. Okay. God's holding off on things until those who are around you are with him too. Because some of these blessings can't come until you release certain things. They're gonna either release you or you're going to release them. God's gonna intervene somehow. Because they can't go into this land thank you holy spirit he's, he's saying just like joshua and caleb only certain people can go on this land other people can't go with you and this can be sons daughters mothers fathers aunties brothers uncles sisters cousins it doesn't matter and god is holding off on some things until those who are around you are with him too, because some of these blessings can't go until you release certain things. And I'm a living witness, people. I did not realize this. It is true. You, it is, it is non-negotiable right now. It's non-negotiable in the spiritual realm. You're not going to be able to negotiate with God. He sees something you don't. And I'm telling you, this is, is a fact. Um, and some blessings can't come to you until you release certain things. In this case, the Lord literally pushed my son out. And I don't want to get into it, but you, um, that's, you know, he will push some of these things out. Okay. And the reason, hold on one second. The reason for this is because who is on the island with you? I just saw an angel when I said this too, um, has to want God as much as you want God or greater. They have to be following God's instructions in this season. God will not allow those to come with you or be under your covering who will take the blessings because of what he's about to do. The water surrounding you. It was like the water and the dams were about to break and overflow. And it was like my son was flickering on and off, like in the matrix, you know, or like lights flicker. And he was going on and off. And what the Lord is saying is, that is this. You don't know the spiritual state of that person. You don't know if they want God. We assume because our hearts are so pure or good as children of God, um, that those in our family, even our sons and daughters, aunties, uncles, mother, and father want God as much as we do. But God was revealing like an x-ray, the spiritual state of my son, the way he saw it. And he, the Lord, does not want people who do not want him willingly to serve him. You can't pull them into his glory. You can't pull them into the blessings. You can't pull them into the holy place. Even natural family, children's mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, it doesn't matter. You can't pull someone into the holy of holies because if you do, they'll die. The people who entered into the most holy place, if they were not set apart, 
They did not survive. They didn't survive. And their natural relationship, thank you, Holy Spirit, doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to God, as we've seen. Their natural relationship doesn't matter to God. Their spiritual relationship with God is everything. You have a natural family and there's a spiritual family. And we went over that over Job's in Job's heart. The video is down here. So God is revealing the spiritual family. Okay? And and the natural um inclinations of man's heart and where their hearts are towards him okay you can't pull them they have to want god and want to seek god and want to walk the narrow path not everybody wants to walk the narrow path not everybody wants the warfare not everybody wants god's heart not everybody wants it some people just want the gifts they want an outer court relationship is what the holy spirit is saying and god will not force their hand he's not manipulative like that he won't do it he will woo them. He'll love on them, but they have to want it. They have to seek it. They have to want to seek him. And the reason why is because the things of the flesh don't understand the things of the spiritual realm. Now, unfortunately, just like Judas, they were around spiritual things. Okay. These family members, these people in your family and friends and acquaintances, they saw the things of God operating in you. It just was not in their heart. There's no other way I can put it. Their heart posture just was not in their heart. The, the Lord just gave me the scripture. Thy word have I hidden in thy heart so that I may not sin against thee. And what he showed me was hearts having deep roots, like roots coming up from a heart like a plant. It has to take root in their heart in order for them to serve God. And you don't know how deep those roots go. You assume because they're your family, they operate the way you do. They don't. Judas saw everything Jesus did and still betrayed him. Joseph's brothers knew the dream was from God and that only made them jealous to betray him. Just like Judas. What was in their hearts became openly on display because of Elamet, the God of truth, come through Holy Spirit. And because of this, God was revealing their heart states too. And they had, you know, no idea. Joseph didn't have an idea. And just, God just gave me the revelation, gave me the dream, but he gave me the full revelation to show me that. When God is removing someone in the season, you have to let them go. Certain blessings are being held up because you will not release people. And I'm hearing... Um, I'm here to tell you I am a living it makes no natural sense you have to believe and walk if that means walking alone you're not alone I'm in there too you must do it some of these things you've been waiting 20 30 10 15 20 years for and they're being held up because of who's on the island with you God has no tolerance for that in this season whatsoever. And he also reminded me to put this up again and I'm going to put it back in the community tab. And he said to take, um, he said to put it back up. He's not going to take mercy on your enemies, even if they're family members, just like he did not take mercy on Miriam for grumbling against Moses. She still got leprosy and Moses had to go pray it off for her. And in some of these cases, God is going to say, no, you cannot pray it off. It is his wrath. Okay, I am going to stop here with this and pick up on video two because this one's 28 minutes right now, guys. So this is video one. There will be a video two. See you in the next video.